Hey everybody, Express from Chris Country. Sitting, standing next to my uh, Key Dodge and the 5 Dodge Ram today. Today's video, I'm just going to kind of go over what you do when you're buying a truck or car or really any vehicle. Um, and I'm just going to kind of give you, give you tips on what I look for, things I tend to look at. Now just to let you guys know, and I'm pretty sure you know, especially with today, you know, this is May 2017, there's tons of videos out there on how to buy used cars and trucks. Um, if you're looking at used, like these Power Stroke Diesels, PowerStrokeHelp.com has a wonderful series about that. Um, Eric the Car Guy has a series of videos about that, but this is just things I look for. So the first thing, but, uh, but for, you know, mostly buying, but also this kind of applies to selling too. Um, the sites I typically use are Facebook and Craigslist nowadays. I mean, there's other sites out, there's apps, I should say, like LetGo and eBay. Uh, well, eBay's a website, but uh, I guess Blinker is a new one that's starting to uh, be up and coming too. I don't know as much. I don't really have a whole lot of experience buying and selling vehicles off those. Most of my experience comes from Craigslist, YouTube, or not YouTube, Craigslist, and Facebook. Um, buying from Craigslist or buying from Facebook. I know everybody nowadays has to worry about the scammers and the spammers out there. Uh, just a few pointers from a buyer's perspective. Um, if you pull up an ad, and you see the vehicle and you notice the price is really, really low, like a fraction of what it should normally cost, that's usually the first dead giveaway that I have that tells you something's up. And if you see, like, just like, you know, it just only has like one picture, and you, you kind of, you can kind of learn, especially if you've been on Craigslist for a while, you can kind of learn when it's an actual picture, and like, versus like when someone's pulled it off the internet from somewhere, or like if it's like one of those stock pictures and it's like the only picture versus like people who normally are selling their vehicles they usually have many pictures like going around the truck inside the truck that kind of thing but uh, getting back to pictures if it's only just one and it just doesn't look like a normal Craigslist picture that usually tells me that it's a scam um, another uh, another possible heads up about a scammer, it's just usually if they don't have a phone number, I stay, I get real leery about those. And then of course, you have, like if you reply to it, like they leave a phone number, you send a text message, and you get a message back asking you to email them at such and such, and usually the email comes, you know, this text message comes back like hours later. Sometimes it's a quick response, but usually it's not. But if you ever did it, if you ever text inquiring to buy the truck and you get a response back asking you to email them, 99.9% .9 of the time it's a scam. So that's just like a, a real quick and dirty way to look out for stamp for scams when you're in the position of buying. Now just on a quick side note, if you're on the position of selling, same thing. Uh, the get giveaways that if, if like a spammer is trying to get a hold of me and I'm selling the truck. Usually you'll get like a text message and it has like the title to your Craigslist ad, like it's literally the title, location, in parentheses, price, and then you'll get something like, is this item still available? Nine times out of ten, that is a dead ringer for a spammer. So usually I just delete those, ignore them, or just in general, if you get like, is the item still available, I, lately I tend to ignore it. I'm like, if it's a real person, they're going to say truck car, whatever it is you're selling. They're not going to call it item. Okay, so now that we're past all that. Um, people ask me, are there pros and cons about private party versus a dealer? In a lot of ways, there's pros to a dealer. Yeah, you can get a warranty sometimes. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the buy here, pay here lots at dealers, they usually sell you warranties, but they're usually not very good. Or they're just usually not good at all. A lot of the warranties nowadays, I've noticed, if they sell you a warranty at a buy here, pay here, it's just not worth it. I mean, I, um, Bill Hewitt, who, who runs PowerStrokeHelp.com, I like how he puts it. That warranty, you can wipe your ass with that warranty. That's, a, that's about how, how good it is. All it is, is just the way for them to basically pad their check at the end of the game. So if you're at a buy here, pay here, and they're offering you a warranty, 
I wouldn't really do it. Now, if you're going to like a major car lot, you know, like the Kia, Perdition, GMC, that kind of thing, usually their warranties are through the manufacturer. If you get a manufacturer warranty, that's great. But of course, you're looking at the higher price point and things like that. The major cons about a dealership are you don't have a history on the vehicle. Nine times out of ten, especially on a used vehicle, they're selling you something that they either picked up at an auction or was traded in. Well, if they were traded, well, if it was traded in, the question is why was it traded in? And things like that. And if it was like a repossession, which means they couldn't afford the payment, you know they didn't do any maintenance or take care of the thing. And it's just, I, I, in my, in my opinion, if if you're getting it from a dealership, generally you're two steps back because you have no history on the car and you don't know what it's been for. But at the same time, private dealers, to me, it's a roll of the dice. And here's the one thing about a private dealer that you really have to pay attention to. You really have to be careful when you're buying a private dealer because once the money crosses the table and you get the title, you own it, no matter what the problems are, because you know it's an you. You're, you're never going to get your money back or any sort of, you know, any sort of recourse if they sold you a bad car. That's the main downside to buying from a private dealer. Generally, you're paying less for, from a private dealer, but again, you have to be careful about what you get. And this is another thing I've learned too. Any Anytime somebody's selling a car, they're selling it for a reason. I mean, it's very seldom someone's going to take a perfectly good car sell it. No, I mean, it happens. Somebody will sell a good car. I just, it's rare that you see perfectly good. Nine times out of ten, if you're going to, if you're going through a private party for a car, especially a car with any sort of age on it, you're going to have, have a car with problems. Rather, they could be minor problems, but there could also be major problems and they're trying to unload it on you. That's why I'm making this video to try to help you avoid, you know, making bad, making bad purchase decisions.